with Dr. Gale for five minutes. Um, thank you, all of you, uh, for allowing me to speak to you about the system of the colonial boarding school in Tibet. I am here to share my research findings and uh, what I have personally uh, witnessed about the boarding preschool as this is a completely hidden policy of the Chinese government. Based on the most <clears throat> more than 50 boarding preschools I have seen with my own my eyes, I estimate at least 10 100,000 Tibetan children from age four to six are now li living separate from their parents, family, and community. After I received my PhD at the University of Toronto, I returned to Tibet in 2015. I then started teaching at the Yunnan Normal University. The following year, my brother called me uh, because he was concerned about his two granddaughters' behavior. I went home to see them. This was the first time I came in contact with the colonial boarding preschool. I picked up my two grandnieces, uh, one age four, one age in the age five from their boarding preschool on Friday evening, and then carefully observed them while they were at home. Um, clearly, I saw they did not hug their grandparents and had uh, almost no emotional exchange with their own family members. They sat a little further from away uh, from all of us, family members, almost like guests or strangers in their own home. They converse uh, with each other only in Mandarin and Chinese language. This was after just three months in the new boarding preschool in our local township. Prior to this, they spoke no Mandarin and were raised in, the, in an entire Tibetan-speaking environment. I realized that my family's case was not unique. The Chinese government was implementing a mandatory preschool education policy over all Tibet. For the following three years, I, uh, during the summer vacation, I did academic field work on this topic. I visited boarding preschool across all eastern Tibet, what China now calls Qinghai, Gansu, Yunnan, and Sichuan. I spoke with kids, parents, teachers, and other village stakeholders. And my conclusion was the same as with my two grandnieces. It is very important to understand that Tibetan parents have no real choice about whether to send their children away to the boarding school, even those very young children in the rural area of the Tibet, just age four to six years old must attend boarding preschool. Local village school have been shut down, the Tibetan private school have been shut down. There are really no local options, and no Tibetan option left for parents who don't want to send their children away to those government boarding preschools. This is all by design. The Chinese government invests the vast amount of the resource and the much careful thought into pulling the Tibetan children out from our culture and from their family by the root. They do this by teaching almost entirely in Mandarin the Chinese language and by making the environment 
entire learning environment into a pure Chinese environment. Even the pedagogical approach is very sophisticated. For example, students were showed Chinese cultural object and then told them to close their eyes and imagine the, those objects. And then they asked to the, draw what they uh, imagined. So later on, they asked kids to explain what they have drawn in Chinese Mandarin. This is a very intentional method to shift children's entire psychological foundation from Tibetan to Chinese. China is weaponizing the school system, intentionally committed to genocide. I am deeply concerned for the well-being of those children, their parents, and the future survival of Tibetan identity and culture. If this colonial boarding school policy continues for more than 20 years, especially the boarding preschool policy, I fear China will end our civilization and the cause the re, re, irreparable harm to our people. Thanks very much. I stand here. Thank you, Dr. Gale, for your testimony. And last, we have um, Lemo, please, for uh, Miss Lemo, for um, for five minutes. <laughs> 